Hello! In this lesson, we are going to investigate acid-base reactions. Acid-base reactions are ion exchange reactions where protons are transferred. Remember, protons are hydrogen ions. The driving force behind all acid-base reactions is this proton transfer. In an aqueous solution, the concentration of hydroxyl ions and hydrogen ions determines whether the solution is acidic or basic. The hydroxyl ion is the OH- ion. If the concentration of hydroxyl ions is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions, then the solution is neutral. In other words, neither acidic nor basic. We use a pH scale of 0 to 14 to indicate the acidity of a substance. Since the concentration of hydroxyl ions is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions and this solution is neutral, we say that the pH equals 7. If the concentration of hydroxyl ions is less than the concentration of hydrogen ions, then the substance is an acid and the pH is less than 7. If the concentration of hydroxyl ions is larger than the concentration of hydrogen ions, then the substance is a base and the pH is greater than 7. To summarize the difference between acids and bases, let's draw up a table. We know from previous experience that an acid has a sour taste, while bases have a bitter taste. Although this is a good indicator for acids and bases in nature, never do the taste test with acids and bases found in the lab. In a lab, we can test for things like ions and pH. Acids have a large concentration of hydrogen ions, while bases have a large concentration of hydroxyl ions. The pH of acids is less than 7, while the pH of bases is greater than 7. When an acid and a base react, a salt and water are formed. Let's look at an example of this. We will react hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. Using our knowledge of what should form, why don't you try predict the outcome? Our reactants are hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. From our rule, we can see that water is formed. What will the remaining salt be? The only ions left over are the sodium and chloride ions, so these are what must form the salt. It is one thing to be able to predict this, but we need to test if we're correct in our prediction. Let's see what John is doing in the lab. Here we see John with hydrochloric acid in the burette and sodium hydroxide in a flask. He adds a few drops of universal indicator to the sodium hydrochloride. Notice the way it changes to a purple-blue color. This tells us that it has a pH of about 12. Now, when John adds a few drops of hydrochloric acid to the sodium hydroxide, the indicator changes color. This means that the pH has changed too. Now, John pours some of the solution into an evaporating dish. He will leave it for a while to see what happens. From our equation, we know that what John should have in the evaporating dish is a solution of sodium chloride. He is leaving it to evaporate. What do you expect he will find when he comes back to check his evaporation dish? Let's go back to the lab to see if you are correct. In the original solution in the flask, not much seems to have happened. But in the evaporating dish, some of the water has evaporated. On the sides, there are some crystals forming. These white crystals are sodium chloride with the formula of NaCl. So, our prediction was correct. The product is sodium chloride. Remember, this is commonly known as table salt. Let's recap. An acid-base reaction is a type of ion exchange reaction in which a salt and water are produced. The strength of the acid and base can be determined by the pH scale. That's it for now. You can find a task video to test your knowledge and more on this topic by visiting www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.